Welcome to Rich GB History, somewhere in a field in Yorkshire. Welcome to Spofforth, situated just north of Weatherby in Yorkshire. In the background you can see Spofforth Castle, which was really a fortified manor house once owned by the Percy family, the Earls of Northumberland. As we walk down the hill, we see the manor house which has stood since the 11th century, although it wasn't fortified until 1308 when Henry de Percy was given permission to upgrade the facilities. Reputedly, in 1215, it was at Spofforth Castle that rebel barons drew up plans for the Magna Carta. The site is managed by English Heritage and it's open 365 days of the year. Entry is free. You can enter some of the buildings that remain and get a real sense of what life might have been like when the castle was in its heyday. Once inside, it's time to explore. There's plenty to see here. The rooms are large and there are tunnels to go through, steps to climb and inviting gaps. You can really get a sense of what it would have been like when it was inhabited by the Percy family. The Percy family and the Earls of Northumberland have long been associated with Annick Castle in Northumberland, but Spofforth was actually their primary seat in Yorkshire. And had it not been destroyed, it would have remained so. Here I am in the Great Hall, a huge area. The castle was destroyed in 1461 following the Battle of Towton by the Earl of Warwick. The Percys were Lancastrians and the victory over the Yorkist King Edward IV meant that their lands and properties were destroyed. And just off from the Great Hall there appears to be a dark tunnel with some steps so I'm just going to enter it now. The steps are looking quite rickety and uh, up we go. Real rickety one there. And oh, bricked up, all bricked up and struth! It absolutely reeks in here of urine. I do not think that that is from the Wars of the Roses at all. Um, well, there is no on-site toilet at Spofforth Castle. It's probably worth me pointing that out. It looks like people have been using this. One of the downsides of having a fully accessible 365 days a year 24-7 castle. <laughs> now let's find some steps that don't lead to a bricked up tunnel that smells of urine. These look a bit more promising. These steps lead to the outside of the castle where we came in. Once we're outside we can see the full aspect of the castle and really get an appreciation of its size and former glory. Spofforth is a small village with some nice pubs and a village shop. It doesn't really give you any indication that such a major northern castle was once located here. As we walk around the outside of the castle we can look down into the Great Hall through the huge windows which would once have been adorned with medieval glass. It wasn't all doom and gloom after the Wars of the Roses. In 1559 the castle was restored by Henry Lord Percy. Despite the restoration in 1559 the enthusiasm for Spofforth from the Percys had waned as their family seat was now firmly at Annick in Northumberland. The last known inhabitant of the castle was Samson Ingleby, who was the castle steward and he died in 1604. The castle was in decline in the 1600s and following the English Civil War, where lots of castles in local areas were destroyed on the orders of Oliver Cromwell, and supported by the local population who didn't want their li little village being dominated and being a magnate for soldiers in the event of further conflict. The castle continued to decline 
and in 1924 Charles Henry Baron Leckenfield, who was the owner of the property, gifted the castle to the nation. Today the castle is a fascinating place. There's a big grassed area out the front, plenty of places still to explore within the castle, a great place for children and dog walkers and people just to have picnics. The site is so quiet it is often dominated by the loud bird sounds that come from the tall towers and the trees surrounding the castle. Just listen to that noise. If you like this video please like and subscribe. It's free just like entry to Spotworth Castle. Thank you for watching.